Well, right now, I am in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Been here for a couple of days now, uh, filming some uh, American artifact videos at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Well, uh, just a, a couple of blocks down from the museum is this building right here. And this is probably one of my favorite historic structures in the town of Gettysburg. The building that we are looking at during the Battle of Gettysburg uh, was Rebecca Eister's Young Ladies Seminary. And we're, we're kind of right in the middle of town, so, so this building would have been kind of at the, the eye of the storm uh, in the Battle of Gettysburg. You would have had Union troops to the, the south and Confederates to the, the north and to the west. Uh, one of the girls who went to school here uh, was somebody who might be familiar with people who are, are familiar with the civilian side of the battle. That was uh, Tilly Pierce. And uh, she talked about how whenever the Confederates arrived, uh, Rebecca Eister told them all to uh, go home as quickly as they could. Well, now this serves as a bed and breakfast and I'm actually staying here for the next few days. So uh, we're gonna go inside and uh, we might actually even have an opportunity to go up into that cupola. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I'm filming at the Gettysburg Museum of History for a few days, and uh, while I'm in Gettysburg, I'm going to be staying here at the Gettysburg Academy, and they've just remodeled this place, and uh, I got to say, it's awesome. So, you know, if you got, uh, you know, whether it's a few people or family or something like that, you can stay here and be completely self-sufficient. Uh, you know, you got a refrigerator. Oh, and take a look at here. I've made use of this refrigerator. Got the uh, the new flavor of Jocko Go in uh, pink mist or pink lemonade, which is really nice. Uh, so anyway, we're going to uh, do do a quick walkthrough in in this historic home. Okay, moving into the dining area of the Gettysburg Academy now, and you can see just the work that they've done here is absolutely stunning. Uh, now, I mentioned how in 1863, this was a, a, a girl's school or girl's college. Uh, during the battle, it transitioned into a hospital. So as we walk into this room right here, well, Today, it can be used for, you know, gatherings or for parties or, or whatever. Uh, during the battle in 1863, you can just imagine all through here, uh, there would have been soldiers lying shoulder to shoulder and foot to head here on the floor, uh, being treated by doctors or nurses or some of the civilians. So th this house would have been um, quite the sight. In, in early July of 1863. All right, I'm gonna take a, a quick look upstairs. So there are several bedrooms up here and uh, I'm one of their, their first guests, so I'm the only one in the house right now. But uh, it, it has such a cool nostalgic feel to it whenever you are staying here. Uh, so here's one of the, the bedrooms. And uh, I'm not gonna show you my bedroom because, well, I've got gear and equipment all over the place and it's a little bit messy. Uh, and then you go over here, they have like a cool little sitting room or like a reading room. And then here is another one of the bedrooms. Something that is really cool about staying here, I showed that Confederate shell that hit the outer wall uh, right there at the beginning of this video. Well, right outside of this window to the left is where that shell hit. So if you would have been in this building during the battle, well, 
probably would have shook you up a little bit whenever that thing struck the side of this building. All right, I think we're gonna go up to the cupola now. Okay, now uh, this space is normally closed off, but Scott was nice enough to open it up for me so that uh, we could go and uh, take a look up in the cupola. All right, we'll take a look at the view of Gettysburg from up here. So from where I'm standing right now, uh, right down in here, that's where that Confederate shell would have impacted the school. Uh, back here, off to kind of my left, uh, you can see the Lutheran Seminary there in the distance along Seminary Ridge. And then right along here, well, you can see where the, uh, the Peace Light Memorial is. So it's possible that the Confederate shell could have come from either that direction or, or maybe off here uh, on, on the northern end of Seminary Ridge. But yeah, this, this place is something else. All right, uh, well, that was just a, a little bit from the, the Young Lady Seminary, or what is uh, currently known as the Gettysburg Academy, uh, right here in Gettysburg. And I mentioned that this building served as a hospital uh, you know, during the battle and in the, the days and weeks after. Uh, they actually had to bury soldiers just right here in the yard. So it's pretty amazing to kind of reflect on how the battle affected the, the citizens right here in Gettysburg. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, as I mentioned, you can uh, rent this out or you can have weddings or private events here. Pretty cool to be able to stay in one of these historic structures. One of the only ones that has a Confederate shell buried in the wall. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, walk on down to the Gettysburg Museum of History and uh, take a look at some other fascinating relics and artifacts from the Civil War. I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, Civil War amputation, treatment for gunshot wounds, and um, the results of amputation. So during the Civil War, you know, the, the mini ball uh, was, was a devastating round. It was a big um, bullet, and if it would hit one of your extremities, like your arms or your legs, chances are it would crack the bone. And so the, the most effective treatment at that time was an amputation if the bone was shattered because uh, there were so many men coming in for um, treatment that they, they couldn't really do um, effective surgery and plus the infection situation. But this is an amputation kit and um, it's a true U.S. made one. Um, it, it's, a, it's one that was bought through a government contract. You see a lot of them in antique shops that are you know, European made and are certainly period amputation kits. But this is a true, what we call an army amputation kit. And so the, what they would do is, you know, if, if, if a leg or arm was shattered, they would give them anesthesia. That, you know, that there's that misinformation that they would just saw your leg off while you would bite on a bullet or something. But it's not true. They, they almost always had um, some kind of anesthesia. Person would be knocked out or in a daze um, and, and for, for the pain. And, and they, would, they would cut the flesh using these types of instruments. And once they would get the flesh cut, they would go down into a bone saw and they would use this to pull back some of the flesh. And they would use a bone saw to saw off the limb. Um, pretty brutal. I mean, it was sawing through a human bone. Um, also, of course, this is the, the, the tourniquet that they would use to, to stop the bleeding while they were doing this process. And this is the maker mark here. And like I said, it's a Philadelphia maker, um, army contract. So this is a true um, government contract surgeon's kit. This is a trepanning saw, saw for, the, for the head um, and some other smaller saws. Now, uh, we have some bones with bullets in here at the museum. Now some museums won't show them. Different museums, depending on their charter, have different policies on that. For us, you know, it's, it, to us it's not grave robbing or anything. This is medical waste. These were limbs that were sawed off and they were discarded. 
Um, this one came from another museum. It's got a musket ball in it. Um, and th this one um, was found by a local. It has a Confederate mini ball in it. And you can see how it just shattered that bone. This is the, the amputation mark here where it was sawed off. Um, it has museum numbers from a different museum that it was in. Now, um, when we first started getting this kind of material or being offered this kind of material, we had to make the decision, do we want to show amputated bones with bullets in? And um, I, I, I had to make that decision. I made the decision. And, and I, I went back to um, the fact that our GAR hall here, which was the first basic collection of relics that was assembled by veterans, veterans of the Civil War here in Gettysburg um, at, at our GAR hall. They would have a meeting hall and they would get together and they had some of their war memorabilia there and there is a bone with a bullet in it there. They were proud of that and they were, they were willing to show that. It's part of the story. So we have it here as a medical exhibit and um, some museums won't show it, but we do. Um, I think it's important. I think it's educational. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to keep them on ex exhibit here. Here's a photo that they have in the museum, kind of next to the medical display. Uh, this is a gentleman by the name of Lorenzo Dickey. He was a private in the 4th Maine and was wounded uh, in Chantilly, Virginia in September of uh, 1862 and as you can see he has an above the knee amputation there on his right leg and uh, I wanted to come back and, and look at these medical specimens here so what we're looking at here is a section of a leg bone and if you look you can see this round ball embedded into the bone so the, the person who was shot with this round ball would have had to have had an amputation. And then right here, well, you can see that straight line cut where a bone saw was used to amputate this limb. And then if we look right here, um, this is a, uh, a specimen that was recovered from the Daniel Schaefer farm. Uh, this was the same place where General uh, Dan Sickles was taken after he lost his leg on uh, July 2nd of 1863 uh, there around the peach orchard and if we look here near the head of the bone well you can see a confederate mini ball embedded in the bone so that had to have been painful and uh, with these mini balls they're, they're made of lead so whenever they hit bone or, or something that has a, a little bit of resistance uh, well, they're, they're going to deform, they're going to flatten out, and the damage that these bullets caused was, was really horrific. I also want to take a, a little bit closer look at this trepanning saw. Look at this daggum thing. So, if a soldier had suffered some sort of, uh, you know, severe head trauma and had swelling on the brain, well, this is the tool that you would use to uh, pop a hole in their skull and help to relieve that pressure. And man, that thing is just mean looking. Now here in the museum, you'll see all kinds of historic photos, but this one to me is the most striking. This is showing six Civil War veterans who have all been wounded in some form or another and uh, at the bottom it's captioned some of the boys who saved us and here you can see these men posing for this photograph uh, all with some sort of uh, amputation or or some sort of war wound from their time in the Civil War uh, now, here in the museum, they also have some very interesting artifacts and displays that uh, talk a little bit about the, the medical practices and medical history of the Civil War. If you were a Civil War soldier who had an amputation, um, afterwards you may be fitted with a device like this. This is a peg leg 
Now, the, the soldier that we showed with the um, above the knee amputation would have a, a, a slightly different device, but this was this was um, created for a soldier who would have had a below the knee amputation. So um, the stub under the knee would go in right here and then there's a strap it, it actually would would affix to your belt up here worn like a regular belt I'm, I'm gonna put it down on the floor to show how it would work um, you know the, the knee would go in here and right around the waist area there'd be a belt here um, I have it on backwards the belt would go this way um, but then then there's also little um, notches here that you could used to attach to the bottom part of your knee, like right where your knee was. So they would, they would put that on um, so they could walk easier. And then of course, um, to go along with that, they would have a pair of crutches such as these. These are um, 19th century crutches from a, the same soldier that had that, um, that peg leg there. So between the two, they could get around and walk without having to be in a wheelchair. So it was a, it was a mobility uh, device. So, um, you know, and, and there, there was all kinds of different prosthetic arms and legs and different things that were created um, during and after the Civil War. It became quite a, a business. Um, and sometimes you see them and um, they're kind of gruesome looking, but they're interesting also. All right, so those are just a few of the surgical items and medical specimens that are on display here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. And, and I think we have to use a little bit of historical empathy whenever we are looking at these things. It would be very easy to look at you know, some of these surgical tools and instruments and say that they were barbaric and, and uh, that they uh, didn't know what they were doing and they were just butcherers. They were doing the best that they could with the, the knowledge and the tools that they had at the time. People, you know, 100, 200 years from now might look back at us and say the same things. But very interesting to uh, be able to, to look at some of these tools and uh, use it to understand a little bit more about the Civil War.